Hey guys, welcome to Grow Your Business Online. Um, I'm Connie and I have a very special guest today. Um, we're going to be doing once a week, we're going to talk with a business owner who's doing amazing things online. Um, so this is our first, our first little video podcast. We're not really sh we're we're just going to have some fun. So, but you guys, this is Karis. She is with Studio Pillows. Um, if you're not following her, oh my gosh, you guys, you need to be following her. Um, but Karis, tell us a little bit about your business and um, how you got started with it. Yeah, so um, so my name is Karis. It's just like Paris, but with a K. Um, and I own Studio Pillows. Um, so I started in 2014. Um, it was just supposed to be a hobby. Uh, I started with Etsy, and I kid you not, I was like, maybe I'll sell a couple pillows, you know, like, let's do this. But what happened is um, I've been sewing since I was a kid, and I um, remodeled my home. And then I was like, well, I need some pillows. And then I was like, well, I know how to sew, and I know how to do this. So then I just like threw up a few pillows on Etsy and you know, some friends told me about it. And then probably within three months, it just kind of took off. And if you have Etsy and anybody does, when you get a sale, it goes, you know, cha-ching. And so I kept hearing my phone go cha-ching and I was working at the corporate job and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so yeah, so. That's yeah. awesome. So it really was just kind of a hobby. Um, and then Absolutely. it turned into, um, when did it turn into like a full-time business? How long did so that? it really did. So, um, I always kind of try to share a little bit of my personal life and it's fun because you're a believer so we can kind of talk yeah. the same lingo and stuff. So I always try to leave, try to not leave this part on my business is, um, it did start as a hobby and then within three months it took off. And so not a lot of people know this, but, um, I was married and that same time that it took off, um, my husband took off. And so I was, yeah, so I was really scared and I, I still had my corporate job, but I had a mortgage, I had a rental property, I had all these things. And um, as much as, you know, we want to be like, we're so great and our business is so great. Like I do have family members that are like, remember it's God's business. And you're like, okay, like, <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, so yeah, it started off and so no joke, Connie, like, for two years, I um, worked 80 hours a week. So it probably should have been a business a lot sooner than what it was, but I was going through so my heart was just breaking that year. So I think instead of, you know, like drinking and smoking, I was like making pillows and <laughs> the weekends. I actually were making money making pillows. So I'm making money, selling so pillows, making money, money uh, drinking and smoking. <laughs> I don't even smoke. I don't even smoke, but we say that like drinking and smoking in Texas. But, um, so yeah, so that two years, I literally like just made pillows at night. I made them on the weekends. Um, I can remember one of my favorite pillows. I don't have it anymore, but it was, I was in a fabric store and it had birds on it. And it was a really hard day. And, um, do you know the verse, like God says, he'll like, even the birds, or what is it? I'm messing it up. I'm not a pastor. But even oh, the birds. It's the one where you don't have to worry about anything because you don't have to hear the birds. Yeah. And I remember a pastor telling me, if you're having a hard day, like, don't forget you're worth more than the birds. Aww. And I just remember looking at it and crying in the store, like, just a little bit, you know, and just like, I'll take it. I don't care if it's not on sale, <laughs> you know? So. Um, it was really this crazy two years where I was working my marketing job as a marketing director for a financial firm and then at night making pillows and weekends and things like that. And it was, it was, it was a lot of stress. It was a lot of stress. And then, um, once I got over my personal life, like that turmoil was done. Um, I think maybe a year, year later. I finally just quit my marketing job and like I kind of snapped one day as a twig and talked about it with my uncle and I went over my savings and here's how much my cost, here's all my cost. And, and That's I was like, so scary though, being single. So scary. So scary. I so mean, scary. I, I did that in July and oh, it was the scariest. It was one of those moments where God was so crystal clear in that moment. 
of it's time to transition. But like when you make that transition, especially being single from full time into Absolutely. you are responsible for, you know, and yes, we trust God that he'll provide for that. But it is scary to step out. Connie, I am so happy you said that because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like negate the married girls or things like that. But sometimes like, sometimes majority of people I think are married. And, and so sometimes you feel a little isolated because you're like, well, here's the deal. This this ain't a hobby. Like this is, yeah. this is, you know, paying this my mortgage. Paying the rent. And this is kind this of paying is, the bills. Yeah. yeah. And this, you know, and so you never want to like, you know, judge one group or the other, but as a single person, oh, for sure. It yeah. is, yeah. it is like, I ain't got nobody helping me <laughs> my mortgage. So, and then it comes back as us as believers, right? Like you always got to think God's going to provide and you have to hold it loosely too. Like, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And you move on and you go try something else. You know, I so people that really were like, you know, well, what if it doesn't work? And I'm like, well, then I go get another job. Like, it's not a, um, you know, but I have to trust this in this moment that yes. I clearly, and this is what he told me to do was step out, you yes. know, and, and God just kept whispering, like, I'm more after your obedience than the path, you know, of what that looks like. And it, ha it's looked nowhere what I thought it would look like, you know, right. at times, but like, I know that I've been obedient. So it's scary. It's scary owning a business. It's like, whoop, 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 whoop. I mean, people don't, I mean, maybe cause like the social media, they see all the highs and stuff, but like, you're like, do you really want to see me crying on the phone to my mom or <laughs> like, I can't do this. And I'm just going to sell a studio pillow and be, you know, go work for Google. I mean, people don't see that, you know, so. Yeah. And the death that goes with that. Absolutely, girl. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. when you're not making pillows and now that you're not working 80 plus hours a week, like what do you do for fun? So I play tennis. I play tennis. Yeah, I'm a tennis player. So um, we probably take it. No, not we. Probably. I take it and all other tennis players we probably take it way too seriously um tennis players are not nice we are ravaged we <laughs> are way too competitive and um I love it and it's sick and twisted but I love it I love but I do love all my friends I play tennis with and um I'm always like with my best friend and she plays tennis and you know we're paddle boarding in Austin downtown or you know doing something so yeah so yeah, it's a great place to do all of that. Um, and yeah. do you find it hard sometimes to like, I know some days like, um, like it's hard to put down the business and go have some fun. So is that, you know, I think it is. And it probably isn't Connie. I think you get this owning your own business is that I really do love what I do. I love it. I love it. So when I worked my corporate job, when I was getting texts from the CEO or people from overseas at certain times, I'm like, Oh, don't I get paid for this? you know, like leave me alone, you know, right. but with, with studio pillows, like if somebody messages me and you and I've talked about this, the time blocks and trying to work things out, it doesn't feel like a leave me alone. I'm like, Oh, these are my people. This is my business and stuff. And so I'm really trying hard, like on Sundays or certain times to just, you know, just be a little bit and stuff. So the same thing. like Sundays is my, like, you know, and somebody will, you know, message me or whatever. And I'm like, I'll answer you on Monday. Um, just because you do that in this world, right? Everybody just flips out. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, but I, I have a question right now and I'm like, I, yeah, I know, but like, I really have to take that day and like do it. And um, you and I were talking before we started oh. with, like the time blocking. So yeah. talk, talk to somebody who, like maybe they're just now starting out on their business. They're still working their corporate job. They're still like, they're still doing all this stuff. And you, you were talking about time blocking and I know I do the same thing, like, cause it can be overwhelming. So like, tell us a little bit of like, what do you time block? How do you, like, what does that look like in your world? So one thing that I can't, oh, I wish I remembered because it's such a good book for people to read, but it talked about time blocking and so working from home, you get this, I'm sure, is I think sometimes people are like, oh, they, they don't work, do they? Like, <laughs> they're available anytime. They're available. You, can, you, can do yes. this. you can take my call, you can do this. 
but I read this really good book and I'm so sorry that I don't remember what it is. Um, maybe I can just, I'll send you the link or something, but he talked about time blocking, whether you're the best in the mornings or the afternoons, right? So one thing that I really try to do because I'm a little ADD is I try to do, four, I say Siri, 45 minutes, set my timer for 45 minutes, because I'm like, if you said four hours, I'm like, Ugh, don't know if I can handle that, right? But 45 minutes, you can be like, I can do anything in 45 minutes. And then after that 45 minutes, go get a drink of water, go check your mail, go do something, you know what I mean? But that 45 minutes, if you're really concentrated and do that, whatever it is, if it's for me, it's cutting, you know, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, it's just really good to do, and you get so much done. But here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm very close with some of my family members, cousins, things like that. They call me and want to talk, and I've had to have the self-discipline of just being like, no, I'm working. You know what I mean? Because you want to be in that mental state that I am working on growing my business. It's not a hobby. Right. You know, this is my business. This is my business. So it's hard to do. Harder, harder. Well, and I think that it just takes that discipline. I know for me, like some days it's like taking the phone and putting it in another room so that, um, because it's like, I, get a, I get a notification on the phone and I'm like, oh, I can answer that really quickly. And I'm like, and I'm working on somebody's Pinterest or I'm working on somebody's, you know, graphics or whatever. And I'm like, I can't do it. Like I have to like literally go like you guys, you have to figure out like, what is that that distracts you? Cause I don't think it's the same for everybody. Uh, so the gentleman who talked about time blocking in the book, which I can't remember. Um, work week. I want to 30. Was it, did you say? Is it the 30 hour work week? I don't think so. Is that one I should read though? Should I read that? Should I write it down? No. But I, well, this gentleman, one of the things he talked about is just what you're saying, how they design phones and things like that is literally those noises that you hear either from like Etsy or Instagram. It is supposed to create in your brain a sense of urgency. Like I, and have you, you, you will notice that too. Like you hear the phone and you're like, oh, I got to answer this. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's done on purpose. So it's not by accident. So and that's why they're not all the same um, dings, why they're not all the same sounds. Right. Cause you know, yeah. like what's important and what's not important there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, those are good tips. Um, so what are your favorite social media channels? Which ones do you use for your business? Um, so that question, what do you mean by that? What do you mean social media channels? Like, like, you use like Instagram, Facebook. Oh, Instagram, yeah. So um, I was thinking like other accounts. So Instagram is my favorite ever. <laughs> I love Instagram. I love everybody that I meet on Instagram. I feel like I'm almost like at school and I meet all these <laughs> new people and I have friends on Instagram, but I think it's great for your business. Um, I can't tell you uh, how much I've had like either business from Instagram, like, um, and you see it through your sales channels. Like I have everything now directed to my website and not social and not my Etsy account, but, um, that has been great for business doing stories because I think people get to see who you are Absolutely. because they, they want to, and they, what's the most popular magazine ever? People magazine. People like to look at people. So I think it's good to, and here's another thing. Some of my most popular videos, and I think it's crazy. Don't tell my followers this <laughs> is, um, people watching me. So, and they're yeah. so easy. They're so easy. I just set up my camera and just do like my, that. but people want to see you doing your craft. So I think for other people, whatever you do, if it's build furniture, paint, whatever it may be, like put that in your stories. People want to see your everyday process and stuff. And, and so I, again, don't tell my followers, but you know, it's, there's some of my most popular videos and, and what I do on my stories when I'm doing it, cause I'm like, well, I don't want to just do sewing. I'll put things that are on my mind yeah. that day, you know, like something like that. So you're creating a story and there's like text and I think people can either relate to that or be encouraged by that. And, um, it's that human connection. Like I think as yeah. simple as we are is mobile as we are like we're still craving that one-on-one -on -one connection like being able to say oh i feel like i know her 
like, you know, it, it's, well, nobody, nobody wants to be alone and nobody, you know, I don't, and everybody wants friends and everybody wants to be with, be around people they like. And, um, but I think for your business, yeah, I say if people are trying to do stories, I think doing, be in your craft, be in your element and, um, don't be afraid to be you, you know? And cause sometimes when it's super vulnerable, I don't think people understand how vulnerable it is to get up there and do stories because you're, you're afraid. Are people going to hate me? Cause I go to the gym all the time. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, that girl just goes to the gym and plays tennis, you know? But I'm like, well, maybe I'll find other people. Other people will follow me that like to go to the gym or like to play tennis. And they get the craziness of like, you know, if I'm on a date, don't talk to me. I'm watching the U S open right now. <laughs> I get men in their well, football. She just tennis to a whole other level. Don't mess with oh, the US Open. I get men in their football. I get men in their football. But yeah, so I think social media is great. I wish, so I was talking to you earlier about this. You know, everybody still talks about Facebook and, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm a little bit like, ooh, it's kind of like the, you know, stepsister or something. You know, you don't like, but I was telling you in September when I'm posting and creating and scheduling my posts consistently, I'm seeing the traffic to my website in September versus October where I slacked off. So I think it's good for people to go in there for a time block, an hour, an hour and a half, and say for an hour and a half, I'm not gonna talk to anybody, I'm just gonna schedule my posts for Facebook for the month and do that because it does help. My, my baby is Instagram and where I get majority of my traffic to my business for emails and you know things like that but um I, I wouldn't negate facebook and some people are more prone to facebook but i'm see and i love facebook and i'm not like oh yeah. instagram well just <laughs> rub some of your juju on me <laughs> I it is just, but I, facebook love. I don't think you have to be on everything like you need to pick one or two and like you i'm assuming you've got google analytics set up on your website so yeah like so you guys like she can literally see on google analytics like you can press a few buttons and you can literally see the traffic and where, I mean, they get it down to, is it coming from Instagram? Is it coming from Pinterest? Is it coming from Facebook? And what are they even clicking on? And um, so that you kind of know even what, what's speaking to them. So Pinterest is another good one because that's where, so I'm in home decor. So pillows, obviously. So I'm like, these women are on Pinterest looking through things. Well, men too, but you know, majority of my clients are women and um, they're looking for things. And so I use Tailwind to schedule all my pins for Pinterest and you see the traffic to the website as well. So like yeah. if y'all are just starting out, like I think we would both tell you like set the back end up, like really like figure out, you know, the Google analytics and you know, the stuff that's going to give you that data so that, you know, like, is this working? Because I've said it once, I'll say it a million times, like numbers don't equate sales. Like you've got to know what's working, whether that's Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook or combo of all three, yeah. um, but schedule you guys now a creator studio, you can schedule on Instagram and Facebook um all is it called is it creator studio is that what you said for the instagram okay okay yeah. and you can totally i mean it's amazing um to be able to schedule all that out so like there's no reason not to i need to do that i need to do that, need to do that. Thank you can schedule your igtv and your stories and all of that so you could do can you schedule your stories now i don't think we'd like to do that because my stories are very spontaneous i never know what I'm going to say that day. It's like what happens happens. And I don't think I could schedule a story. The cool thing is though, your right? data is on the back end of that. So it tells you like you could use it again. So like if you had a story that did really well, like you're sewing a pillow and it brought you in a ton of sales, you could reuse that and schedule that. Hmm. And then you would grow a little bit there. So um, Facebook has done like some amazing, I know like people are like, it's left the app and I can't schedule, you know, I mean, you guys sometimes, I mean, especially as a business owner, you got to go with the flow a little bit. Like things change. Yeah. That's just part of, that's going to be your business. That's going to be social media. Like social media is not going to look anything we think it's going to look like in five years. Like that's just the reality of um, social media. So well, that's why I like, write a book about it because it'll be, you know, dated. 
was in, a couple asked, months. Um, in a coaching group that you and I are both in, like, what's a good social media book? And I'm thinking, <laughs> none. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You wish. You wish. I mean, you maybe wish. somebody put it out and like he did it really quick and then but then yeah. it, you know, in a month it would totally be um I think and people have said this too, I think people can feel if you're being authentic or not on social media. Does that make sense? And so that's why I'm always like, just you do you, you know? And and we're all scared of rejection, right? So I don't know if this helps anybody. But we're all scared of rejection, right? Even on social media, even though we don't know everybody. But it's like, you have to, like God tells us to not be fearful. Do not be afraid. And I think you just, you just go. You just go. And you keep going. You know what I mean? And so. Honestly, I think I've had maybe one or two people, you know, who have like been rude on social media. Oh yeah. That's true. You know, and you're going to get those. <laughs> and my rule is, I don't know what your rule is, like. I see you from my stuff, like, um, you know, like, come say that to my face, like, you're hiding behind a camera, and you're, you know, mean, and I'm like, I, you know, to me, you're being a bully, and I just don't, I don't put up with that, so, like, I unfortunately only had one of those, and when I've, I've only had one, and when she did it, it really hurt my feelings, because I knew she was a client, too, and it probably wasn't even that harsh, but I think when it comes down to it, for me, it's like, it's one of those things where you just have to like really get mentally tough, you know, and just be like, it doesn't matter. It's something in her life. It doesn't matter. Don't take it personal. Move on as quickly as you can, you know? So yeah, definitely don't definitely move out, move on. Yeah. Um, so when you started your business, what would have been like one like piece of advice that really kind of helped you? Starting it, um, even now, like what's one thing that, I mean, kind of stands out that somebody said, can I give two things? Can you give two things? Yeah. So one of my biggest regrets, but I have to show myself grace is, so I started on Etsy and I think a lot of people will start on Etsy because they're going to bring you, you know, um, the traffic, but, um, Again, you have to show yourself grace, but if I can just encourage anybody to just do this sooner than I did, again, I had a lot of things going on in my life and I was still working another job, get your website going, get your website going, keep Etsy, do it, blah, blah, blah. I use Shopify okay, and I cannot say yeah. enough good things for them. Like if they wanted me to move one of their spokespeople, I'd be like, I do it. It's, it's so easy when I have to sell in person, I just have to take this little I mean, just everything is just so easy. It's so easy. And also girls, you are going to be saving yourself a ton of money because you're going to cut out the big commission from Etsy and things like that. So if I can just say, get your website, get your website, get your email list going, email on a consistent basis. Um, that is my biggest advice, but I understand when you're starting out, it's like, well, who's going to come to my website, you know, and I get that totally get that. But as soon as you do start to get some following and some traffic, Build that website. And, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it going. Get it going. Well, and I think that, thanks for saying that. Because I think so many times people are like, oh, but it just has to be like no, absolutely yeah. perfect. And all my products have to be on there. You guys start with like five products if that's where you're at. Like, and that's then what like, I had on Etsy when I started. I think it was like nine pillows or something. And that was a ton. And then so. time block and say, okay, every week I'm going to add two yeah. or three. Um, right. Because you're losing money. I mean, you are absolutely losing money if you're not um, have somewhere that people can purchase. This whole like email me or message me, like you guys, we live in such a, and we, we were talking about Amazon Prime earlier. Like we live in an oh. Amazon Prime, click it, buy it, ship it. Uh, <laughs> message you. Like they, right. They want right. to purchase in that moment. And yeah. so you've got to have a path that they're going on. Yeah. And when they do that, you've got to be collecting that email and then yeah. nurturing that because you can get a ton of more sales from those people. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I think the other thing is, is, what did I say? Oh, yeah, this is like more personal, but it's so you get this, Connie. I know you get this. Is business is owning a business is so mental. It's so mental. So I think. I think as well, I'm sensitive. I don't know about you, but I'm very sensitive. Um, get all the people out of your life Girl. that are going to put you down. They're going to put you down, say something stupid. Um, 
whatever. And it's probably going to be your family members, someone close to you, because those are usually the ones, you know, going like this. But I'm very sensitive about who I talk to my business about. And one of my biggest people is my uncle Brian here in Austin. And he is just so encouraging every single time. And he is like one of the top realtors here in Austin. And he's Mr. Big time, you know, and stuff, super humble. But he's always like, no, go get him. And I mean, like, oh, you know, even when I was doing my website, he was one who told me, don't wait for this thing to be perfect. Go. And, go. Yeah. He's like, go, you know? So I think, and when you have those people, you know, just, just telling you you're a rock star, I think you, you get more brave and you do more things. But if people are like, well, that's dumb. Why'd you do that? It's like, yes, it is dumb, you know, or, you know, just it's, it's, it hurts more, you know, but if you have someone that's really encouraging you, um, and it's probably just going to be one or two people, yeah. you know, um, keep those people close and, you know, spend Thanksgiving and Christmas with all the others and be nice to them, but just don't talk about your business. <laughs> don't talk about your business. And sometimes I know like the people that I can talk with that, you know, encourage me in my business. Like I love just yeah. sitting down and, you know, being like, okay, well, here's the idea I have. Like, you know, and, and sometimes they'll see it from a different point and be like, well, if you just pivot this way just a little bit, or if you just, right. did, you know, this, I mean, it'll totally increase your business. And, um, but then I'm like you, like I've had people that, you know, like I, I got rid of a lot of people, <laughs> you know, just because it wasn't, um, and I don't think they need to be that way. I mean, you guys, a lot of times that's just where they're at in their life is they're not happy in their life. So, right. um, they're going to project that in onto you. And, and usually it's on the days. And I really do believe the enemy does this on purpose. It's days where you're ready to quit. You're ready to give up. You're ready to you know, call it quits. And he's like, okay, let me just put this person here to just like not encourage you. And yeah. So yeah. Amen, girl. Preach it. So can I, so can I share something? Maybe I just started and I felt super vulnerable and quirky doing this, but may help people is when I get new followers on my Instagram, I have a snippet already saved and, um, a little, Hey, thanks for the follow. Welcome to studio pillows. Blah, blah. And I have a coupon code for them Oh, cool! Yes. right away. So like, as soon as they start following me, I say, Hey, thanks for the follow. Send them that link right away. Um, I just started doing that in the past week and a half. And I feel a little cheesy doing it, but somebody did it to me. It was a jewelry right. website. And I was looking at something and they sent it to me and no joke, they have stayed in my mind. Yeah. Doing well, that. Say that. I had somebody that I followed who does like homemade soaps and she did the same thing. Like she sent oh, me. Did, she? Um, did you um, like it? Did you like it? Or were you like, I did because I felt like, and it, and, but y'all hear my heart. Like it didn't come across as, Oh, thanks so much. Like, go by. Like, she kind of built a little bit of, like, you know, a little bit about her, a little bit of, you know, get to know her just even a little bit more. And yeah. it didn't feel salesy. It felt yeah. like, you know, hey, now we're friends. So, like, let me give you a little bit of a discount so you can go and try it out. Versus, yeah. like, buy me, buy me. Like, it didn't feel that way. So, I yeah. think you have to be careful at how you word some of that. Like, Mine's a little bit, mine's a little personal. Mine, I do have a little personal twist in there, which is kind of funny and it's kind of cheesy, but I was like, well, that's me. But as you know, you said, you, you, I think cause sometimes, do you ever feel this way? Sometimes I think we feel like we don't want to bug people. Even when you're sending an email, you're like, oh, I don't want to bug them. But you're like, no, they're on your email list for a reason. You know, they're following well, you for a say, reason. As a business owner, like for you guys who are selling physical products, like one of the things to do with that too, is put an expiration date. You know, say, do you think so? Do yeah. You think so? Yeah. No? You think so? Okay. But like it expires okay. at the end of the month. So every month you have a little coupon code that's only good for that month. So you think so? So right now my coupon code doesn't expire. I mean, I, 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 I can Shopify, I can go in there and change it if I want. But you would, so you would definitely okay. say, really? Okay. Because it gives them a call to action and it gives them that fear of missing out a little bit. So okay. kind of on the fence, like they're going to no, right. Okay. Um, okay. And another great thing to do with that, like that's such a great idea, girl. Um, is even like, cause you're not getting a ton of those. I'm, I'm assuming in a day, like keep a Google doc and like towards the end of the month, go in and say, 
you know, like, hey, just a reminder, the coupon code expires in two days. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Social media is like slot machine, y'all. I mean, they, they see it right. and they're like out of their mind. And right. so you have to bring it back in there and say, you right. know, here's, you know, and you might even just show like a pillow and say, you know, like, I kind of thought of you on this one, you know, kind of look. I mean, take a few minutes. That's a great time block. Because yeah. You get your business. Like, take 45 minutes, see what that person liked or what, you know, kind of look at yeah. that and then say, you know, well, you know, that pillow, you know, with the coupon is only X amount, you know, just kind of build that a little bit. So we just get an idea too. It's always hard. Like whenever you're in your craft, your element is like, so for me, I can see design, interior design, things like that. I've gotten so busy though. I can't, I used to be able to give people hours. Now I just do, and this is the boundary is I just say 20 minutes, you know, but you just even gave me a thought like, cause sometimes I'm like, how are people not seeing this? You know, how are they not seeing this design? But what do you think just made me think is I could reach out and be like, Hey, you know, if you'd like to set up a 20 minute block and you need any help picking out pillows, because sometimes I'm always like, to me, it's like second nature. Like, Oh, this works. That works. But I forget sometimes that sometimes yeah, I would be the one who would need the 20 minute block. I would be like, ah! <laughs> I'd be like, okay, yo, what pillow do I need? Cause, uh, yeah, I've said when I buy a new sofa, like you and I are going to sit down and chat. Cause I'm, I'm like, okay, let me, uh, y'all she, her pillows are amazing. Um, Okay, what is one app that you use on your phone that is not Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook? I thought about this when you said me. I use Lightroom and I love it. Lightroom is where I do all the editing for my photos. Do you not like it? I've never, I've never even heard of it. Oh, your face! I was like, maybe she doesn't like it. No, I love it. It's called mm -hmm. Lightroom, and it's my little secret weapon. And you can load any of your presets that you use if you use any kind of presets. Um, you can load those onto Lightroom and it is my best tool for editing photos and, and to get them to my website perfectly. And I can add all my presets that I use on there. Those are all downloaded. And so I can pick which one I want to use. I use such I minimal. Seriously need to check out her photos. So do you have somebody that takes your photos or do you do all of those yourself? Cell phone, baby. Cell phone, iPhone. <laughs> I, it's, it's all about... Again, it's, um, and one of my favorite clients and people to follow is Rooms for Rent. It's Brie. And um, she is the one who has taught me, uh, you know, when we all start, our photos aren't that great. You know, they just aren't. Unless you're hiring a professional photographer, but I don't know how many people can read. Again, it comes down to money, right? If I'm going to hire a professional photographer and he's going to be this amount, I better be making this amount, right? So, um, but with my cell phone, it's been really helpful, but I have seen over time, your photos just get better and you can be so hard on yourself. Like, Oh, these ones suck or blah, blah. Well, you just get a little better each time. And then I know, see some you... of my Pinterest posts from like years ago and I'm like, Ooh, okay. But <laughs> they are. I mean, you do, you get better. But you're like, people are still buying, you know, that photo yeah. from like four years ago, they're still buying. And you're like, okay, well, I guess. Don't take it off. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a, a light box? Is it free? Is there a. Lightroom. It's called Lightroom. Sorry. Lightroom. Yeah, it's totally, yeah, it's totally free. Okay. And you can do all your editing on your photos. And if you use any kind of presets, you can load them on there and stuff. Cool. So. so let me give you a quick GoPro. Is my favorite one for video, and it's free. What is it? Quick GoPro. Oh, okay, okay. Q I K, and then GoPro. Um, but you can take like pictures of your um pillows, and then create like a little slideshow to go with them. So stories, and it's free. Like it has some music, and it has, but you can take off their branding and. Can you take? Can you take photos that you already have, and then and then create a little slideshow? I'm gonna do that. Yeah. One thirty. Uh, I'm going to do it today or tomorrow. <laughs> okay. If you ever follow on Instagram and go find it. Yeah. Some love. Uh, what would you say to the woman who has a ton of hobbies and she's good at a ton of things? Like I hear this from women all the time. I love everything yeah. and I'm good at everything, but, and they want to have a business. What would be your advice to them? Okay. So you, so I saw this question before and I all of a sudden, like, I'm just like, so I just got a new thought as to how I would answer this is sometimes your business or your craft falls into your lap and you weren't expecting it, you know, like studio pillows. Even I've said this, the name, it was just like, 
well, I want it to be pillows. And someone's like, Karis, no, 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 no. Like, I just want it to be simple. I want to like, people could just say it, you know, studio pillows. And it was in five seconds, I came up with it. Awesome. So I think a woman who has multiple ideas and needs to, you just got to fig. you, you got to pick something. You yeah. got to pick something and you got to go and you got to try it. And, 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 and as a person who's very fearful and I'm a six on the Enneagram. And so we're continually scared like little rabbits all the time. I know we look brave. We are when we get through our fear, but I would just say to that woman, pick something and kick butt and take names and do your best. And if it didn't work, that's okay. Try again. You know what I mean? But if you continually have a bunch of things, it's almost kind of like talk is cheap. Right. I can talk all day long, but really what it comes down to is action and you need to implement something. Otherwise back to this whole interview, it's just going to be a hobby. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, just pick something. And you'll learn so much from the things that yeah. did go right. Like don't look at failure as, you know, it's not a judgment. Like it is this place where you look at it and say, okay, what part of my puzzle you know, wasn't right on or what, you know, what right. should I have done? You learn. You you learn. Do, like make it a learning experience. Right. So, um, okay. So looking forward to the next year, what's your yeah. dream? What's God speaking? I know. I knew you said, I almost cried. So, um, when I, when I saw that it's not business related, okay. um, uh, I have two, I'll give you one business and one, um, personal, I'd love to have kids. I would love to be married and have kids and, um, I'm one of those people like, give me twins, give me triplets. I don't care. You know, <laughs> stretch me out. I don't care. Um, that is a very sensitive subject, but also just one that I would love to have kids. Um, but I got, I got you got, you know, all the fish in the sea, you got to meet that one tuna, but right now I'm just going out with goldfish. But, um, I think the other thing for my business is, um, for me, it's, it's a big mental thing, I think, coming in 2000, and right now in 2019 and 20, and I feel kind of goofy saying this because I've been in business for, you know, four or five years, but now I'm like mentally where it's like, no, I need to get, this is what I want for my, and start getting my mind right, like, and stop living so much in fear, but being like, I am going to email twice a week, and I am going to do this. And I am going to do this with my Instagram because here's the deal. People care about your website, but essentially all the advertising needs to be going to your social media because that's where everyone's at and that's where it happens. And so I think for me, like right now and 2020, it's more get my mind right and my brain right and just this, and treat it like a business more, you know, because it is probably something you love and it feels like a hobby because it doesn't feel like work, but it has to be like, no, this is a business and this is what I'm going to do. So. And you totally have to have, I would say this to any business owner, you've mm -hmm. got to have a strategy behind that. You've got to have a plan, yeah. you know, and know like what are those pieces that I absolutely have to put into place? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if that's Instagram and to email to website, like you've got to know what that looks like. So, oh yeah, I have, I mean, I take people, so I have an email list of about almost 1500 people, but I, and I also have another email list that's about 1500 people, but I call that my buy or die list and I have them totally set up on a separate account and I email the snot out of them. I, cause there are people that didn't, haven't opened an email from me in six months. And so I move them over to my buy or die list and then I just email them like crazy. And it's like, well, they're either going to buy something or not, you know, and you feel like, Oh, I'm going to bother. Am I going to bother them? Or, you know, but it's like, who cares if it's about business, you know? And so they got on your list for a reason, but yeah. So, uh, 2020 and this year I've been more like, this is my, like my, my time blocks. Like I don't have time to talk right now. I'm working or, Hey, it's really, you got to get your brain and things, you know, you're running a race. <laughs> you are yeah I mean you're definitely as a business owner running a race and it matters yeah. who you're running with it matters the strategy you're putting behind that like all of that matters girl thank you oh, thank where, you you're so sweet you're so smart I should be, I'm like what can I ask um where do you want people to connect with you I'm thinking um, Instagram because you guys go get a coupon <laughs> yeah yeah oh that's right but it's gonna expire Gonna I was I was gonna let you 
<laughs> I was gonna let you have blame it, it on me. <laughs> yeah, blame it on Connie, guys, because then I'm gonna email like two days and be like, hey, it's about to expire. Um, no, so you can follow me on Instagram. It's just you know the handle at Studio Pillows. Um, and then the same for Facebook, just facebook.com slash studio pillows. So either way. Awesome. And thank you so yeah. much. So many nuggets there for anybody currently in business that's pro profitable, but for that woman who's just now starting out. So thank yeah. you. You're so welcome.